Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model in Synergy Plate. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So, let's get started. On the dashboard tab you can input the core inputs or drivers for your model. You can see also the core charts and core financials based on these assumptions. So let's start from launch date. This means that this is a date when your business will launch. Let's pretend it will be April. You have also ramp up months. Uh, during this period, your business will grow. If I will input, for example, four months, this means that for the first month it will be 25%, for the second month it will be 50%, then 75%, and starting from month number four and going forward, it will be 100% of your total capacity. Under core inputs, you can input daily traffic by weekdays. So, for example, starting from Monday to Friday, you'll have 200 leads. And on Saturday and Sunday, for example, 500 leads. And you can input it for the first year, which is 2020. And going forward, you can set up some growth for this traffic. For example, in 21 it will be 15%, then 10%, then 5%, and 3%. Below you may see the calculation of traffic year-on-year -year multiple based on these growth rates. And you may see the calculation of total leads based on this daily traffic assumptions and growth rates. And this is broken down by months in the output step based on the count of Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, etc. for each month and based on the assumptions which you may see on the dashboard. Next, you can input customer and purchases assumptions, which is conversion rate from leads to new customers by years. Let's pretend for the first year it will be 4%, 5, 6, 7, 8%. Also, if your customer tends to do repeated sales, you may input percentage of customer that will do repeated sales. It can be also uh, inputted by years, for example, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four percent. Also, you can input count of purchases per month per repeated customer, for example, two, 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 then three and four. And based on these assumptions, you may see the count of purchases by years in total. Also, you are able to set up the seasonality of your sales. For example, if in January you have 20% seasonality, this means that your average annual sale will be impacted by 120%. And if in February it will be minus 10%, then you will multiply your average monthly sale across the year for 90%. If you don't need any seasonality, you can just zero out this set of assumptions and you will not have any assumptions for the seasonality within the model. On the product step, you can input product categories names like 111, 222, etc. Any name you need. And you can set up the sales mix by products. For example, if you will input something wrong, like 80%, your product number 5, which is 100% minus sum of breakdown of previous 4 products, will be minus 40%, you will see the red color, this means you input something wrong. If you set the breakdown correctly and sum of your first 4 categories is less than 100%, then your product E will be everything else until the 100%. So the total always should be 100% and if you input everything correct, this will be in gray color. Below you can set up the price for your product in dollars and cox by product categories, by years, as a percentage of revenue. After you input all these assumptions, you may see the revenue breakdown by products and you can also review the revenue on the profitability, 
chart and on other core financials you have revenue as a total amount by years. Additionally, you can input safety stock under inventory category on the dashboard. Let's pretend it will be 25%. And based on this assumption, you will have the calculation of inventory under your balance. The first part of reporting section consists of income statement, cash flow balance sheet and the summary tab. Let's start from income statement. So on the income statement you may find total revenue broken down by products, COX broken down by products, gross margin, variable expenses, salaries and wages, fixed expenses, EBGA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, interest expense, net profit before tax, tax expense and as a summary net profit after tax. On the cash flow statement you will find cash flow from operating expenses, cash flow from investing expenses and cash flow from financing expenses broken down by its subcategories. On the cash flow indirect you will find more collapsed view of cash flow statement also broken down by operating activities, investment activities and financing activities. And as a total, you may see the net increase in cash or cash movement. On the balance sheet, you may find current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, long-term or non-current liabilities, and your equity. The summary of statements you may find on the summary tab. Here you may see the income statement broken down by years, by main categories, and to the right you may see the detailed year breakdown by months. For example, I can select 2021 and we will see all the PL line items broken down by months. Below you may see the charts with presentation of main KPIs related to the income statement. The same idea for the balance sheet. You may see more important KPIs on the charts and on the line items breakdown and the same idea for the cash flow statement. On the top of financial charts tab you may see the revenue breakdown broken down by products and this information is presented for the two years by months and for the five years by months. Below you may see the chart for the cash balance operating cash flow, broken down by cash inflow and cash outflow, breakdown of EBGA, which is revenue, COX, OPEX, and the result in EBGA you may see as yellow line, and also EBIT, also broken down by months for two years and for the five years. On the operational charts you may see the sales mix, which is count of sold units by products and productivity charts, which is average revenue per day and average OPEX per day, working down by two years and five years by months. Also, here you may see the workforce productivity, which is revenue per employee and OPEX per employee. the benchmarks KPIs you may find your main industry specific KPIs which are changeable for your industry for your country for example gross margin industry benchmark 60% for your country you may see this change it on this chart industry gross margin is orange and blue this is gross margin calculated based on model the same way you may change profit margin, for example 20%, you may see it on the chart below. For the two first years you may find that your profit margin is less than industry benchmark and starting from year 2022 you have bigger amounts than industry benchmark. Also you have wages as a percentage of revenue, average weekly revenue and average weekly net profit benchmarks. the top revenue tab 
you may see the breakdown of your revenue by products and also by years with absolute values and percentage breakdown. The same information you may see on the charts below. Here you may see the percentage breakdown and absolute values breakdown. Below you may see the revenue depth and monthly run rate chart. You can select the year and based on this year you will see the information of revenue by products as absolute values and percentage revenue breakdown on the pie chart. On the revenue bridge you may find the main revenue drivers of growth. You may select the first year and you may select the last year and between these years you will see the waterfall chart and you may see which are the main drivers of your revenue growth, which specific products grow faster and which specific products grow slower. On the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top 4 expenses categories and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with a total below and also to the right you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. The same information you may see on the charts below which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year and you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are, are also changeable. So you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the break-even tab you may find the calculation of revenue break-even level and break-even chart. For this particular, particular use case you may find that your revenue break-even level is less than actual revenue calculation. This means that company is profitable. On the valuation tab you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity which you may input here, cost of loans you previously inputted in, on the dashboard, calculation of resource share you may see here, there is also tax rate and here you may find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model there is two valuation methods which is EBGA multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods. Based on this information we can see terminal value which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow. You may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow and PV and multiplicator evaluation for this particular company. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color you have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. Additionally, you have contents tab which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does, but if you want to know more, you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs 
you will find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you will find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the wages tab, you can input your headcount by categories with hire and fire date, with annual salary, with ability to input different number of employees by years, with annual salary rise percentage, with monthly bonus and tax rate. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let it be CFO, which you are going to hire in March 20. You are not going to fire him, so the fire date will be December 24. So annual salary can be $50,000 and this will be one CFO over the time. So you may see one CFO, which is one headcount starting from March till the end of the model, which is December 24. Also you can input 5% of salary growth rate. You may see the amounts by years connected to this annual salary and impacted by annual salary rise. Let's set up 10% monthly bonus and 5% of tax rate. So you may see below the calculation of salary broken down by months, monthly bonus which is 10% and 5% of monthly ta taxes related to the payroll. Another option to be admin account which will start in April which will grow till the end of the model with annual salary of $30,000. Let it be in year number 1, 2, then 4, 6, 8 and 10 headcounts. Three percentage of annual salary grows, 5% of monthly bonus and 5% of payroll tax rate. So in here you may see total staff numbers which is 2 for the year number 1. 2020, starting from year 2021, you'll have 4, then 6, 8, and 10 in the last year of the model. Again, calculation of salaries for these two, in this case 4, that counts, calculation of bonuses, and calculation of monthly base taxes. You may see an income statement, total salaries and wages, and here you may see the total amount of bonuses, payroll taxes and wages for these headcounts. On the fixed expenses tab you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, you have utilities. You will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. You may see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days, this means this will be $1500. Also you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types. For example advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis with amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. And that's it. Another option is B-weekly. For example, $500, you can start from 
July, for example, and you will have two payments, which is two B weekly payments within the month. $500 multiplied by two, you have $1,000 per month. Again, you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August 24, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option, office setup, which can be one time payment, which will happen in February 20, with amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any gross rates, because this is just one time fee. And you may see that office setup will happen in February 20, with this amount. Another option, insurance. Let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model and it can happen monthly with $1,000 per month with 5% of growth first year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third and 1% year number four. So you may see this calculation here starting from January 21 it will grow for 5% which is $50 and starting from January 22, it will grow for 3%, which is additionally $32. Another option, quarterly, you may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually, in this case, you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments, you'll pay one time per 12 months, starting from February till December 24. For each expense type you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also in income statement you may find total fixed expenses group if you will ungroup this section you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items on the variable expenses tab you can input your variable expenses as a percentage of total revenue let me show you how it works for example bank fees and your bank fees is 2.5 percentage of your revenue. So in the same way as your revenue grows over time, you may see that bank fees will grow as a percentage of this total revenue. The same way you can input other variable expenses, like for example, 5% direct labor, like 15% of total revenue, and below you may see the calculation of these variable expenses by months. So these expenses will be connected to the income statement tab, section variable expenses, and you may see these line items by months and break broken down by expenses types. On the CapEx tab, you may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of examples. So, for example, office development is purchase date of February 20, with spending of $10,000. And you also can input payment delay. What does it mean? Let me set up two months, for example. It means that this amount will be accrued in February because of purchase date is February, but paid development expenses will be in April 20 for this office development. And you will have some balance of CapEx accounts payable for two months. Let me give you another example, other development expenses. Let's say March 20, $5,000 is zero payment delay. This means that this amount is accrued in March and paid in March as well. The total amount of development expenses you may find 
in Assets tab. By default, it has useful time for 5 years for the calculation of depreciation. And we find calculation of depreciation for development expenses in here. Here you may also find capital expenditure and closing net book value. Additionally, you have up to 6 placeholders for other assets, for example, other assets with useful time of 10 years with cost of $25,000 and with launch date in April. You may find it in here, you can see capital expenditure, you may see book depreciation by months for this amount. And you may see closing net book value. The total amount of depreciation you may find in income statement. On the cash flow, you may find cash flow from investing activities for these assets. And on the balance sheet, you may find fixed assets amount under non current assets and capex prepayment and capex payables as well. On the capitalization table, you can input different founders and investors' contributions, broken down by different dates of funding, with different cost of share for each series, and you can see the dilution of shares after each round, and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders, founder 1, founder 2. So total amount of shares for founder 1 can be 10,000, for founder number 2, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder 1 is $20,000, for founder 2 is $40,000. In total they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So let's pretend that for series A we have one investor and the date of issuance is May. Cost per share is $5 per share and number of shares is 1000. So total amount of investment will be $5000. You may see that before the Series A total equity was $16,000, after $65,000 and Investor 1 will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of Founder 1 and Founder 2 also diluted. 32.26 and 46.52 percentage. You can also input some amounts for Series B and Series C the same way you can set up the date, cost of share and up to 5 investors with up to 5 placeholders for number of shares. The amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow, in the ordinary equity risings and you may see the balance sheet which shows you the total equity by months. Also on the top of the dashboard we have debt assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt we are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input some amount of the debt, the launch date, term will be 60 months and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant which is just simple amount, which is paid in some specific months, and that's it. No repayments, no terms in terms of interest. 
So all the calculations of the depth you may see on the capital tab. Calculations for depth number one, depth number two, depth number three. Total depths with grants. These calculations impacts income statement, interest expenses, the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments, and on the balance sheet, we have the debt closing balance. On the top of the dashboard, you have currency denomination and taxes setup. So currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency. You have currency outputs. It can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs. So let me give an example. When you input in United States dollars, you have euro as an output and for this case you can set up currency exchange rate this is 1.2 for example in this case you will have in the model all your inputs in united states dollars all your outputs in euros and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs additionally you have denomination which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports in this example we have denomination is 1000 mean that your outputs is denominated by 1000 you can select millions you may see that now it is in million dollars you can set also billions or without any denomination additionally you have corporate tax setup change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for reviewing this. Uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.